There are some nights I hold on to every note I ever wrote. Some nights I say fuck it all, stare at the calendar, waiting for catastrophes, imagining they'd scare me into changing whatever it is I am changing into. There's a lot of very audi audible differences in, in the albums. Uh, I think the last album was a little more of us kind of just getting used to each other, getting used to the songwriting process, and um, and a lot of us trying to, I think, impress one another. So uh, it, it when people bring up the like Queen type of influence, I always feel like they're, they listen to our last album, because that was really like us just going over the top and, and throwing on so many different layers of strings and vocal harmonies and all kinds of different stuff like that and I think that for this album there was an emphasis on being able to strip all of that back and, and for the three of us it was no longer about uh, impressing one another it was it was that we all understood each other and it, it wasn't an individual thing it became a cohesive kind of unit and I think that uh, that reflects itself within the songs because they, they're a lot more I think put together and um, and there was an emphasis in the early stages to kind of think about old like classic classic songs like an Elton John song or something and um, and kind of catapult it into the, the future with uh, with things like hip-hop production and break beats and and um, more modern type of synthesizers and stuff like that if you lost in a fall or you sinking like a stone carry on Carry on, oh, oh, oh. carry on, carry on. I think it's a bit like like falling in love, where it's like you have that chemical that's released. Like I think anyone can make a great first album because there's all this like excitement and there's like these endorphins that are happening. Um, but I think making a second album that's worth a damn, that's like the real moment. When like you're kind of in the shit, just like in a relationship, and you're you're in reality, and you know you you've passed that point of like pulling out all your bag of tricks and using all your best bits. I think that uh, Kanye is is probably the biggest, especially when when like because Dark Twisted Fantasy was such a musical influence on the album. Uh, uh, there's not any any rapping or anything like that on our album, but but I think that we used a lot of we used the same producer. We used a lot of the same production team, engineers, people like that. So uh, I think I think Kanye would probably be the biggest one. And then there are other people like Drake, Nas was, I was listening to a lot of Nas. Uh, so many different things. We'd always have like a hip hop moment, I think in the studio working with, with Jeff where we would where we would kick back and like listen to like a Mob Deep album and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. No, I know that I'm not all that you got. Incredible. Um, I think that it it was it was obviously a massive look for us, a good introduction for us into the mainstream. Uh, the song was doing. We had released it probably about a month earlier, and it was doing well amongst the people who were already fans of the band. Um, but most of, well, I guess it, the world hadn't really heard us at that point, and so Glee was was our first big look as far as the mainstream was concerned and um, I think the one of the unique things about that is the fact that Glee doesn't necessarily do that. We were the first band that didn't have like a, a hit, quote unquote hit song that uh, that they covered and um, I think that's a testament to them. It further proves why they're, it's such a progressive and wonderful show uh, for them to say you know what, like, people might not know this song, but after we're finished with it, they're gonna start to know it. And that was, that was really an amazing feeling. I think that we've been lucky 
and having those those looks. And I think that, you know, we've, we've said no to, to other things. Um, it's not as though we're just kind of saying, yeah, 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 let's, let's, let's do all of those type of things. Um, I think that when, when you decide that you want your song to be used in a car commercial, like it, it, it requires a, 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 like some talking about it. And then after you, you've decided that you're gonna do it, you essentially just have to own up to the fact that, that that's what you're doing and, and you're proud of what you did. And um, for us, you know, uh, I think had they said early on, oh, it's gonna be a commercial where a car does a kickflip. Uh, and like, can we use your song? Like a car is gonna be doing a skateboarding trick. Can we use your song? I think we would have been like, uh, no, but it was a car commercial. And so we thought like, all right, well, they're, they're gonna be able to use the song in an epic way. And when we saw the first cut and when we saw that it was a car doing a kickflip, it was incredible. It was like unbelievable. Like, it just shows how talented um, advertising people are. And I thought that they used our song amazingly. And I, I think we're very proud to own up to that. And, and we're proud of the fact that when the Super Bowl happened, there were like four other musical acts that were performing during halftime. Like, you saw them, you heard their songs. We had a song that was like a 20 second clip. And somehow that was the song that the very next day went went to the top, and and um, that's an amazing thing. So so if that's going to help us sell records, if that's going to put us in this room and put us like allow us to get to go to to places like like Italy, like that's it's it's pretty insane. Give me a second, I I need to get my story straight. My friends are in the bathroom getting higher than the Empire State. My lover, she's waiting for me. Just across the bar, my seat's been taken by some sunglasses, asking about a scar around. I think back in the day, it used to be hard for, for us to go to Europe. I mean, it used to be hard for us to tour in the United States. Uh, when we first started this band, it's, it's almost like you've, even having been around for a long time, it's like you almost start over and you have to get fans. And, and it, it's a lot. It's, we have almost like 10 years worth of, I guess, fans and people who have supported us to go along the way, but but when you, you've gotten no look internationally, you come, I, I've, uh, in my last band, and even even in fun, we went to the UK, <clears throat> toured with Paramore, toured with an 8,000, a band, like people that were drawing 8,000 people a night in the UK, and it, we, we'd sell like three CDs. So it's really hard, you come, you lose so much money, and you feel like you're just starting over again. And unfortunately for, for us, that makes it it just makes it really hard because you, you can't even afford to come to Europe. So for this to be happening is just like, is unbelievable and, and it makes the world feel like a smaller place and it, now we want nothing more than to, you know, it's, it's not just about how we're perceived in the United States, it's not just about the tours in the United States, it's, it's really become this thing where um, nothing is off limits. Like any, you, you point anywhere on a map and, and there's the possibility that we can go there and that we can actually like have people supporting us and, and we can show people what we're all about. Tonight, we are young. So let's set the world on fire. We can burn brighter than the sun. She's so talented. You know, like that's the biggest thing. We're just huge fans of hers, which is special because the collaboration came about because of that, not because like, you know, we even said this before, but it's like a lot of times labels will be like, oh, we can put A and B together and then, you know, this will this will help sell. But uh, Andrew was a huge fan and always talked about her in, in such a way. And then when we knew we wanted a female artist, you make that imaginary list in your head. And because Andrew had so much respect for her, she was at the top of that list. And so Jeff, met her through people and played her the song and she liked it and it was all very organic and it's nice to have our, our big song the collaboration on that song be something that just came from the heart from us it's like this would be so cool not saying that like an A&R person was like you know this this is what we should do because here's why it'll help blah 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 so the, the, the answer which you know hopefully isn't boring is just because we were really big fans of hers and sometimes those little dreams come true so if by the time the bar closes and you feel like falling down well, I'll carry you home tonight